So, uh, say you want to murder someone as part of a conspiracy to suppress knowledge of the nasty side effects of a drug again. This time, you need it to be completely untraceable, like that time when you cleverly ran Alex Lentz off the road with an untraceable hit and run. You know your target's happily married, reasonably fit, and looks exactly like Han Solo, so with that in mind, how about you, uh, send in a weak-ass one-armed dude to try and stab him in his own house while his wife is home? I honestly don't see what could go wrong with this. Don't ever argue with the big dog. Big dog is always right. <laughs> Virtually every facet of Devlin McGregor's plan to kill Dr. Richard Kimball and the fugitive is moronic. First, the assassin they send, Sykes, objectively sucks. Due to his lack of an arm, Sykes can only barely murder Dr. Kimball's wife after a protracted struggle, and Kimball himself immediately hurls Sykes' ass down the staircase. If Kimball didn't rush back to check on his wife, he surely would have torn Sykes' other arm off and shoved it up his butt. Uh, up Sykes' butt. I mean, unless that was something Kimball is into, in which case, you know, <laughs> who am I to judge? He had a mechanical now, it was quick thinking to frame Kimball for his wife's murder, but why was Sykes so surprised she was there in the first place? The whole plan seemed to be based on the idea that Kimball's wife wouldn't be home, despite her being a very normal human who likely returns home at the end of most days. And yet Sykes is shocked to find Mrs. Kimball in her own house at like 10 p.m. Oh, wow, gee whiz, look here. And even if she hadn't been home and Sykes had somehow gotten the drop on Kimball and stabbed him in that big old glorious silver beard, it's not like the police would assume it was a robbery. Sykes used Kimball's personal keys. There's no sign of forced entry, so the police would know that the killer would have to be connected to Kimball somehow. And actually, on that note, did Sykes plan to lock the door behind him after he snuck in? Because then Kimball couldn't get in because Sykes has his keys. There'd be this awkward standoff where Sykes is in his underwear sitting in Kimball's house waiting to murder Kimball who's outside in the cold freezing his dick off. If Sykes did leave the door unlocked, then Kimball would know something was up, and an alert Harrison Ford is a dangerous Harrison Ford. There are dozens of better plans. I mean, if you're such a powerful pharmaceutical company that makes such dangerous drugs, why not poison Kimball? Or why not stab him in a Taco Bell bathroom and make it look like a classic case of Doritos Locos madness? My friend Richard Kimball doesn't feel well. Whatever you do, don't let yourself into his house with one of his keys, engage him in one-armed, weak-ass combat, and forget his freaking wife exists at all. Absolutely anything is better than that. Mr. Stop. Ah, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Be sure to check with Kathy on your way out for some drugs for that tiny little head on your back that's left over from the twin that you ate in the womb. Okay. Uh, I'm so tired of it. Like, why do I even do this if they don't think I'm a real doctor? No, it was a great episode. It was probably our best episode ever. For idiots. Which I'm not an idiot. I'm a, I'm a PhD. I spent 30 years in doctor school. This is why I get. Kathy, do you have any go go juice? I'm sick. Oh my God, how did you beat me up here? Are you always filming? I'm a filmmaker, bro. <sighs> well, Kathy is the receptionist I thought and she's supposed to give me my go-go juice. <laughs> See these latest comments. Okay, now I'm at least 60% you sure you're not what are you a doctor. Oh, yeah. 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 Nothing. Maybe editing will help soothe my emotional pain, if only for a moment. The medical community at large has long agreed with my assessment that vampires should not go into the sun. I mean, they'll either die or they'll turn into sparkly man-children, and both are humiliating. This is what I am. 
The primary reason Robert Neville survives for as long as he does in I Am Legend is that the vampire zombie things who got mutated by a cancer cure that did not work, they can't safely interact with direct sunlight. This means that during the day, Neville's free to walk around outside or the street without fear. Keep your eye on this one for me. And as stupid as the vampires seem, they're smart enough to recognize that the sun literally sets them on fire. But actually the vampires are super smart and rig a complex trap that successfully lures and captures Neville. The mutants can't grab Neville right away because it's still daytime, but the longer Neville hangs there, the closer the mutants and their crazy dogs that I guess also ate cancer pills or got bit by somebody who did, they're able to inch much closer to him using the shadows for cover. Except why don't they just wear a damn hoodie? Nice sweatshirt there, Fred. Don't set it down anywhere. We know this is a usable workaround because earlier Neville went out in broad daylight, threw a blanket over a mutant's head, and pulled it into the sunlight unharmed. The dogs themselves can stand in light shadow while they wait for nightfall. Only literal direct sunlight causes damage, not just general exposure to the outdoors. A big sturdy parasol would open up the entire city for these guys. Hello. Wanna see some infected rats? Even if they couldn't figure any of that out, why not just throw something at Neville? He's literally just hanging there. They're smart enough to emotionally manipulate him with a mannequin and build a system of pulleys and cars, but they never considered the possibility of like chucking a spear or a couple of big ass rocks at him while he hung there unconscious for hours. Even Josh Rosen could probably hit that target if given three hours and an unlimited supply of rubble. Ha! Sick reference. <laughs> that is such a sick reference. I mean, nobody would know who Josh Rosen was except for an actual sports medicine doctor, which I am. Hmm, you know what? Those I Am Legend zombie vampire things became that way because of a cancer cure that didn't work, but maybe if I came up with a cure for cancer or maybe anaphylac anaphylaxis, then they would have to believe me that I'm a doctor, right? But how do I do There that? is one way. <laughs> Hey, Naked Jordan. Hey, actual Dr. Jordan. So what were you saying? We need to steal the Book of Doctor's Secrets. The Book of Doctor's Secrets? But it is forbidden! It's the only way to help those with life-threatening allergic reactions receive treatment at a reasonable price, Jordan. It's locked away at the secret public library. We just need to apply all the lessons we learned from our favorite medical documentary, Doctor Strange. What? It's literally the exact same thing. Cassilius and his buddies break into the Nepalese Temple Public Library so they can steal a few pages from that book about time spells. But they weren't sneaky at all. They immediately ran into a magic librarian. What? Well, yeah, but they chop his head off, so it was cool. But when the other magicians find the head? No, they, they thought of that, remember? They brought a bucket and then they put the head in the bucket. And the actual body? Well, I mean, it didn't fit in the bucket. So they suck it still. I mean, yeah, but it doesn't matter because Cassilius tricks the good guys by not stealing the whole book. He just rips out a few pages. The only way to tell which book he was looking for was by opening like every book in the temple library. Or you could just pick it up off the floor. Oh, shit. Right. Uh, well, but they didn't look in it, so they put it back anyway, so it's still good. We're still good. But Strange did look in, and he realized there were missing pages referring to a very specific spell to awaken Dormammu. Because Cassilis left the damn thing on the floor, the good guys immediately knew what his plan was. Yeah, but that was like a one in a million thing. Doctor Strange is more interested in fixing his special hands than trying to provide a cheap way to fix anaphylaxis. If somebody finds a few pages missing in the Book of Doctor Secrets, they're gonna know we're trying to create an EpiPen alternative. Who is gonna know? The pharmaceutical company Mylan? They have very shady business practices. You should look it up. That's a good idea. I'll be sure to check the description of this video after. Oh, well then what should we do? I mean, Strange's stealing method was good. Instead of cutting people's heads off, he just sneaks the book out with those tiny portals they can all do. Yeah, but they'd immediately notice if the entire book was missing. Okay, but it was packed full of time-based spells. They'd only know that the book was missing, not which spell he was gonna use. At a minimum, he could have stolen the book, made copies real quick of those pages, and then returned it. Maybe. But he'd still get beaten by Doctor Strange's magical prowess and the Eye of Agamotto thing. But Doctor Strange only learned how to use the eye from the book that Cassilis left behind. If Cassilis took the whole book, Strange would never have learned how to stop him. Hell, Cassilis could have taken the damn eye too if he's gonna go around cutting people's heads off. I feel like a lot of this doesn't apply to our exact situation. What are we talking about? Stealing the Book of Doctor Secrets? Oh. I'm just saying we should take the whole book of Doctor Secrets. No copies, no torn pages, minimal severed heads. That way Big Pharma doesn't know which name brand cure we're attempting to create a cheap alternative for. Yeah, all right, that makes sense to me. So all I really need is a backpack and a uh, head bucket. <laughs> no, um, no that, we don't need a head. I thought I was the evil one. You're a reflection of me, bro. Oh God. Jordan, Jordan. Anyway, thanks man. Yeah, sure thing, Precious. I told you calling me that makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> Sorry. Have it.
I'm boxed. Oh yeah, I guess you just pick it up. Under arrest, bitch. Oh my god, Devin Byam M.ed. I thought you were whatever that stands for, not a cop. Well, cop, I don't, that's it's kind of like a buzz. I'm like a, I don't know, I'm a guy. What am I under arrest for then? The head, the head mostly, the severed head. Okay, but like on Craigslist, it said it was like, like a deer head. And then I got there, and he's like, it's actually, it's a dude head. And I was like, deer head, dude head, I see. I mean, I get not wanting to waste the trip, but it's definitely a dude head. And it, you can't have it. I mean, you can't just, ha you can't have it. Am I not allowed? Uh, we don't like saying things are illegal at this point, but it's right. frowned upon. Right, but you can't, can you frown me all the way to jail? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, I need yeah, maybe even to the chair. <laughs> Criminals never get ahead. I found you a picture earlier. It's cool, I already forgot. What are you arresting me for? <laughs> the head, the head, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that. I mean, I found a, this Facebook where you can get all kinds of things at Facebook Marketplace. That's true, you can get a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't realize how far the head was going to go. Yeah, all right. Good. Oh, there's a huge dog turd there. All right, just said, what are you arresting me for? The severed head, mostly. The, yeah, that one there in the bucket. Oh, that's like a, that's like a Facebook Marketplace thing. But he said it had been in his family, and I was like, I want, a, I want one of those in my family. You cut it off, it's illegal, you purchase it, still illegal. It's just not, none of it's good. None of this is good. Yeah, I thought that it wasn't illegal if I just bought it. Yeah, no common misconception, but yeah. still very... Damn. Sorry about yeah. the whole bitch thing earlier. Oh, no, it's fine. Yeah, you... Everybody calls me. Yeah, oh, come on. Let's get out of here. <laughs> I just stay down there. Hey guys, thanks for watching the finale of Your Brain on Crack, season one. It's not the end, by any means. Uh, this is Caleb, by the way. He's Hello. been in a couple of episodes here and there. Um, he's the guy doing all the camera stuff and all the teleprompter stuff and just, it's been basically just the two of us for most of this, so he's been helpful, obviously. Um, a couple of announcements that we wanted to throw your way. First, I'm no longer ordained. I'm working here full time now. Um, this is not the end of your brain on Cracked. We got another season coming. Uh, we've got all sorts of new shows. Really excited to, to bring them out and to just be doing this full time. Thank you for your support. Also, next Friday, we will be live streaming on the Cracked YouTube channel. And we'll pretty much just be watching through season one, talking about all the stuff that went into making it happen, all the, the goofy things behind the camera that you guys don't probably realize what it's like to be a crew of literally just two people. With Kong. And uh, Kong, yeah. Of course. Um, but yeah, we'll just be talking about what, what made the season happen and kind of what, what went on behind the scenes. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. So check it out. It'll be here on the channel. Uh, you might learn a little bit about, you know, how Kong is when he's not, you know, he's like perfect on screen, but that guy is an asshole he's behind a, the scenes. A method actor. For yeah. sure. <laughs> he has been a monkey for like four <laughs> months. It's crazy. Yeah, so I guess like and subscribe or whatever if you haven't. And uh, if you haven't by now, do you even want to? <laughs> yeah. I honestly don't think subscribers do anything for this channel. We, we could have 10 million subscribers and it wouldn't. I don't think anybody gets notified. It doesn't matter. Uh, we'll see you next week.